good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. Here we go. Hey, I want to I want to start this week with a new series called Divine Healing and Blessing Facts. I was going to do a hundred of them, but I realized as I was going through these over the weekend that there's a lot more than that. There is so much to this. Healing and blessing facts. Number one, healing, divine healing, and the blessing of God go together. They go together. And sickness and poverty is no more natural than sin. I want to show you something here. In Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse, I think it's 31, Genesis 1, 31, it says, now this is after God created everything, right down here, right down here, it says, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Everything that God made was good. Everything. Man was made good. All the animals were made good. The earth was made good. There was no famines in the earth. There was no drought in the earth. There was no floods in the earth. There was no tornadoes or bad weather or, or anything. Just everything God made was good, including people. And everything that people needed to live was provided for. And you have to understand that when God created people, he created them perfect. People were never meant to die. Your body was never meant to die. When God created Adam and his wife, he created their bodies absolutely perfect. They, he intended for them to live in that body forever. But God said, when you eat of that tree, you're going to die. You will die if you eat of that tree. Now, because everything was created perfect, we have to understand that that was the original intent of God for his people. Therefore, therefore, because everything was created perfect, there was, there was no place for sin, there was no place for sickness, and there was no place for poverty. Sickness and poverty is no more natural for people than sin. People were not supposed to be sick and broke. Yet so many people are. So many people are. We have to understand that this is not from God. This is not natural. God made all things very good. Therefore, we should not look to the remedy of sin or sickness or poverty in the natural. God created people without sin, without sickness, and without poverty. And that's the way he intends for us to live. You know, faith begins where the will of God is known. It is very difficult to get people healed if they don't realize and if they don't understand 
that they're supposed to be healed, that they're supposed to be prosperous. So many people think it is noble to be broke. They take pride in it. They actually, I have known people who actually take pride in their poverty. Now, I don't think we see as much of that as we used to. But it used to be, I'm telling you, years ago. You know, say, well, I worked hard all my life. My dad worked hard all his life. My grandfather worked hard all his life. He died with nothing. But he was a good man. Yeah, he was a good man. But he was not meant to die with nothing. God's word says that we shall leave an inheritance for our grandchildren. Huh? What happened to that? That doesn't sound like somebody who, who should die with nothing. I'm telling you, faith begins where the will of God is known. And if you do not know beyond any shadow of a doubt that God wants you to be healed and God wants you to be prosperous and to live in abundance, I'm telling you what, it's going to be very difficult for you to get a hold of this. And, you know, it's like I was working with somebody a while ago who, who was very ill. And I said to him, I said, well, do you believe God can heal you? I'm getting ready to, to, to pray for this guy and to speak over this guy who is, who is in stage four. He's dying. And I'm trying to get a little bit of faith out of him. I'm just trying to get him to speak a little bit of faith. And I said, I said, do you believe God can heal you? And he says to me, he says, well, if he wants to, if he wants to. Now, this guy goes to a wonderful church here in the area, right up the street from us. And these, this church has three services every Sunday morning. Service Saturday night. I mean, they are packed out. They've got a, a, a worship band up there <clears throat> that recording artists play their music. Great band. Great band. Smoke. They fill the church with smoke. And, you know, all those, all those machines that make the smoke and stuff during the worship and the music. And, and, and the preacher is cool. Really cool. Stands there with blue jeans on Sunday morning, his shirt hanging out. That, that's, that, but he's cool. And this guy said to me, he says, well, God can, God can heal if he wants to. This guy has spent five years in that church and he doesn't even know God wants him to be healed. Now you tell me why so many people are dying of sickness and disease and so many people are staying broke. In that same church, some people in our church, some people that came to our church, actually a woman, uh, her husband was a raging alcoholic. And he was... His, his sister had died of liver failure. His brother had died of liver failure. And he was dying of liver failure. And every time he had an episode where his liver would shut down, they would call us up to the hospital and we'd run up to the hospital and, and that's when they were in our church. And we would speak over him and pray over him and his liver would straighten out. And he'd go home and next thing you know, he's back in business and he, he worked in the hearing aid business, had a great business, made lots of money, he had a beautiful home, but he was a raging alcoholic. Well, I, I said to his wife one day, I said, listen, I said, his problem is a generational curse because alcoholism is running rampant in his family. I said, bring him in here and we will get rid of that and he can live a good life. Well, when he found out when, when she told him that I said he needed to come to church that we could get rid of that alcoholism, he left, he, he took her out of our church. 
And they started going to this church where they had the wonderful worship team and all the music and the whole deal and where they don't even realize it's God's will to heal. And the first time his liver went downhill, he died. They couldn't save him. They, could, they couldn't do nothing for him because they don't even believe it's God's will to heal. Wonderful church. What's, what's going on in your church? What's going on in your church? Does your church understand that sickness and poverty is not of God? That God created everything perfect and God still intends for everything to be that way. God intends for us to be healed. God intends for us to live in abundance. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If we're supposed to have an abundant life, we are not supposed to be sick and broke. Because I'm telling you what, people who are sick and broke are not living in abundance. No. And Jesus said, John 10.10, 10, just as, 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 as clear as the nose on your face. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Super abundantly is actually what that means. That is a, a high form of abundance. That's what God intends for us. God intends for us to live the same way that he created Adam and Eve. Now, don't ever let anybody tell you any different. You are supposed to live in perfect health and in abundance. Now, is anything less than that acceptable? It should not be. I absolutely refuse to live with any sickness or disease in my body. I absolutely refuse to have the people in my church live in lack and poverty. I get rid of that. I get rid of that. We, I'm telling you, I, I just posted a picture on Facebook yesterday of some people in our church with a brand new truck. Brand new. November and December, these people didn't have a place to live. Ten kids and a mother-in-law. They didn't have a place to live. Now they are living, I'm telling you, they have moved into abundance. They have extra money left over. I'm telling you people, now there's different degrees of abundance. Everybody who lives in abundance is not a billionaire. There's different degrees of abundance. But these people now have more than enough money to pay their bills and they're living in a 4,500 square foot home and in November and December they were living in a motel. They didn't have a place to live. I'm telling you what people, now, now they're living the way they're supposed to live. We have other people building million dollar homes in our church. They're living the way they're supposed to live. I'm telling you what now. God created everything perfect and that's the way he wants it. Perfect is perfect health and abundance. More than you need. It's not necessarily being a billionaire or a millionaire, but it's having more money than you need to pay your bills. That's what I want to do. I want to get everybody healed and I want to get everybody to the point where you have enough money to pay your bills and money left over. Then we'll go up from there. Amen. Hey, that's the start of this. We're going to work on this. I'm telling you what, I'm going to increase your faith for healing and for God's blessing. You absolutely cannot imagine when we get done with this series, your whole life is going to be changed. Tell everybody you know about this. Go to my website, increasenow.com. I'm out of time. Help us support this ministry. Help us send this message around the world. And remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills.